welcome to my video on the tangent function. In this video, I'm going to introduce the tangent function and graph it in detail. So you'll see the, uh, the graph in front of you get filled up with just one cycle of the tangent function. And we'll talk about all of these important pieces of information as well. So the function f of x is equal to tangent of x, or y is equal to the tangent of x, is going to take an x value and map it based on what this tangent does, based on the definition of that function. right? And it's going to be cyclical. It's going to keep repeating itself. So it's going to look something like this. And then it's going to repeat itself. And then it's going to repeat itself forever and ever. We're only going to really focus on you know, like the main cycle of it right in the middle. But just understand that this does go on forever. And this one is different than the last two. It's different than sine and cosine uh, in not only the way it looks, but in, you know, a lot of ways. A lot of, you know, there are asymptotes in this case. You know, there are issues with the domain every time there is an asymptote. And uh, we'll, we'll get into all that in a second. But Let's start with this really important point, right? And every every time I graph a function, I always want to start with like a what I would consider like a baseline point, just to kind of get my memory going and figure out where I need to start. And I know that when I plug in zero for tangent, I get zero. In other words, the point zero comma zero is on the graph of tangent. And here's why: it comes back to this unit circle. I keep coming back to this. All right, I do this in class. Pretty much every day, I revisit the reference angle chart. I revisit the unit circle because it's so important. The connections are really, really, really important. So let's say we have on the unit circle our radius of 1, which means this point is 1, 0. Well, the tangent, by definition, the tangent of an angle is equal to the sine of that angle divided by the cosine of that angle. And why is that? Well, if we go back to go all the way back to, you know, like ninth grade geometry, eighth grade geometry, whatever, Sokotoa told us that tangent was opposite over adjacent. Opposite over adjacent. Alright, so if we drew and we'll come back to this one zero in a second, but if we drew a little reference triangle like we've been doing and I put theta here, right? I know that my hypotenuse is one because that's the radius. And let's call this point x comma y, which means this is x and this is y. So we go over x units and up y units to get to that point. The definition of tangent in right triangle trig is the tangent of an angle is opposite divided by adjacent. So the tangent of this angle is y over x. Well, if you remember from my first video on sine, we said that the sine of an angle is the y value, and the cosine is the x value. All right, and there was a reason for that as well. I'll go through it very quickly. But the gist of it is basically the sine of an angle is opposite over hypotenuse, which is just y. So the sine of an angle is y. The cosine of an angle is adjacent over hypotenuse, which is just x. Adjacent over hypotenuse. So x over 1 or just x. So when we look at this thing, as you know, we go back to Sokotoa and we define it as opposite over adjacent, we are defining it as y over x. Well, sine is y and cosine is x. So we define it as y over x. We can also define it as sine over cosine. So what that means is at every point on our unit circle, we can simply take the sine value divided by the cosine value. So let's get back to the sine of 0. right? The sine of 0, which is you know, this point right here, when, when the degrees are 0 degrees or, or 0 radians, you know, if we're dealing with radians. The tangent of that, the tangent of 0, is sine divided by cosine, 0 divided by 1, which is just 0. So that's where we start. I'll highlight it. It's a key point. 
If we go up to here to radical two, excuse me, pi over two or 90 degrees, this point is zero comma one. So the tangent of pi over two is the y value divided by the x value. You can't divide by zero, so that's undefined. So tangent of pi over two is undefined. If we go over here to pi radians or 180 degrees, this point on the unit circle is negative one comma zero. So this is pi radians or 180 degrees. The tangent there is the y value over the x value, which is just zero. So the tangent of pi is zero. If we go down here to three pi over two radians or 270 degrees, this point is zero negative one. So the tangent of three pi over two is the sine value which is the y value divided by the x value, the cosine value. And you can't do that, so that's undefined as well. And then if we go back to, you know, 2 pi, we've made one full revolution around and we're back to 2 pi radians or 360 degrees. Same deal, right? It's 0 over 1 or 0. So you see that these five key points are going to help us out in graphing our tangent. For this one, I'm also going to look at another key point, which we'll get to in a second, which is going to be pi over 4 and 3 pi over 4. We'll come back to that in a minute, though. But let's graph these five, right? Tangent of 0 is 0. At pi over 2, it doesn't exist. So what does that look like? Well, let's set up our graph first. Our, we need to scale our x and y axis. So I'm going to scale this thing. I'm going to put maybe this as pi, this as, well, let me, let me do this. This says pi over 2, this says pi over 4, this like that. So I'll scale my y axis, my x axis in that way, and I'll put this as 1, this as 2, negative 1, negative 2. All right, so we just said that the tangent of pi over 2, the tangent of pi over 2 is undefined. It does not exist. That's going to be a vertical asymptote. So at pi over 2, I'm going to simply just draw a dotted line because tangent does not exist here. Same deal at 3 pi over 2, right? But that's going to be like, you know, if this were, this is pi over 4, this is, this is, this is 1 pi over 4, this is 2 pi over 4, that means this is 3 pi over 4, all right? And this is 4 pi over 4, or just pi, right? And it will just keep repeating itself. So we're not going to go over to 3 pi over 2 right now. We're just going to stop right there. And what I'm looking at here, I need to go in the opposite direction, the opposite direction, and think about the symmetry of this odd function. Tangent is an odd function, which means it has symmetry over the origin. So this is also an asymptote. Tangent does not exist there. So what I've created now are sort of my, my main parameters for my tangent function to exist within. We said that tangent of 0 is 0, tangent of pi over 2 does not exist, and tangent of negative pi over 2 does not exist either. Now what that means is the period of our tangent function is pi units. In other words, it keeps repeating itself every pi units, which is kind of interesting. <clears throat> the other point I want to, I want to show you is when x is pi, the tangent of pi is zero. So this point appears right there. If we were to go in this direction a little bit more, this would be negative three pi over four, negative pi. So this is zero as well. All right, and the cyclical nature of these graphs is that the distance it takes to repeat itself is the period. In this case, it's pi units. 
you'll notice that the asymptotes are also pi units away from each other. If we go left pi over 2 and right pi over 2 all together, it's pi units. All right, so we still don't really have a very good idea of what the graph looks like. We have general parameters here. We have one point on the graph at 0, 0. But this is where it's going to come into play, this pi over 4 idea. And I need to know what the tangent of pi over 4 is. Well, the tangent of pi over 4, I just happen to have it over here, is 1. I'm looking at my reference angle chart. The tangent of pi over 4 is 1. Now, what's the reason for that? Well, we already said that the tangent is defined as sine over cosine. So what's the sine of pi over 4? Well, it's radical 2 over 2. What's the cosine of pi over 4? Well, it's radical 2 over 2. Those cancel out to be 1. So the tangent of pi over 4 is 1. That's a key point. That's a key point. Over here, the tangent of 3 pi over 4, well, that's going to be negative 1. Tangent of 3 pi over 4 is negative 1. Because the um, uh, if you go left, you're going in a negative direction, of course. So this point right here is you know like the negative x direction. This is the positive y direction. So we defined tangent as the x, you know, the uh, the y over the x, right? So in the second quadrant, tangent is negative because the cosine is negative, right? Cosine is the adjacent over the hypotenuse. The cosine is negative, so it's the negative radical two over two divided by positive radical two over two. Tangent's negative. It's negative one. So we need to put those points in there. Tangent of pi over four is positive one. Tangent of 3 pi over 4 is negative 1. The tangent of negative pi over 4, again, we go back to this idea of period, right? The points are going to repeat themselves every pi units. So this is going to be a negative as well. I remember I said this is an odd function. It's symmetrical across the origin. All right, so the graph is going to start to really come into, into view here. So it's going to infinitely approach this asymptote, and it's going to infinitely approach this asymptote, but never really touch it. And we just kind of have to smooth it out in between. And that's not great. I'm going to do it again. Something like this. That's your tangent function right there. And it would keep repeating itself, like I said. It would go like this, and it would go like this, forever and ever. All right, but we're just going to focus on that one cycle. So let's fill in some of these values here, and then we'll wrap this up. The amplitude does not exist for tangent function. Amplitude, again, is the height of a function. It's silly to kind of talk about that for tangent since it goes on forever. The domain is all real numbers except everywhere that um, there's an asymptote. So except where x is pi over 2, where x is negative pi over 2. So everywhere that there's an asymptote is pi, starting at pi over 2 and then repeating every pi units in either direction, pi units in either direction. So we say that plus pi times some number, some integer n is an element of the integers. The range is everything. The x-intercept, of course, is 0, 0. There is no maximum. There is no minimum. The asymptotes, negative pi over 2, positive pi over 2. And then it would repeat forever and ever uh, after that. Uh, no phase shift, vertical shift, or reflection yet. We'll get to those in a future video. But this is the uh, the basic tangent function. Again, a little bit more professional view of it is right here. The cycle that I showed you is just this main cycle. So I uh, hope that helps you. And uh, in the next video, we're going to get into uh, all the reciprocal functions. So we're going to go 1 over sine, 1 over cosine, 1 over tangent.